Hey everyone, it's Natalie, also known as Knitty Natty. Today I'm gonna to cover five things experienced knitters do when they're making socks. And in case you missed it, go check out the first part of this sock knitting series, and then come back here to see five more tips on knitting socks. The first thing that experienced sock knitters do is add contrast cuff heels and toes to their socks. This is actually a really fun and easy way to kind of jazz up your sock knitting. You can do it in pattern socks, you can do it in vanilla socks, you can do it for other people's sock patterns, you can do it for anything that you, you know, come up with on your own. It's just a matter of changing your yarns. It's really fun and easy to do, and it's best to use a yarn that is a similar, if not the same base, because if you use anything that's too different, it can make that portion of the sock smaller or larger, just depending on the fiber content. Now, how much yarn does using a cuff, heel, or toe in a contrast yarn actually take? Well, that's something that we're gonna cover next. The second thing that experienced sock knitters do is use a kitchen scale to weigh their yarn while they're knitting socks. Now, I am guessing that most of us don't actually know exactly how much yarn we use every time we knit a, sock, a pair of socks, but for most of us, it actually doesn't take a full 100 grams. And it's really nice to know how much it takes for each portion of the sock. That way, if we're trying to incorporate leftovers or use up scraps, we can do that in an efficient way. So this scale that I have is just regular kitchen scale from Taylor. It weighs in grams and in ounces, but I use grams most of the time for knitting because that's how hand dyed yarn is typically labeled. The only thing that I wish I had in this scale was that it weighed to like decimal points in grams. So definitely take a look at scales that have that capability. Now there's two ways you can figure out how many grams of yarn it takes to knit a pair of socks. The first way is you can just take a pair of finished socks and pop them on your scale and see how many grams that is. Then you can subtract it from a 100 gram skein and know how much you're going to have left over if that is important to you. The other way that you can figure out how many uh, grams you've used for a pair of socks is when you start your next pair of socks, weigh the uh, cake first, knit your socks, and then weigh the cake when you're done, and you can subtract the difference. Of course, you'll need to make sure you write down how many grams are in the original cake, because a lot of times, especially with hand-dyed yarn, it's not a true 100 grams. It may be 103 grams, 105 grams, and we wanna be as precise as possible. Where this really comes into play is figuring out how many grams you need for each section of your sock if you're doing a contrast uh, heel, toe, or cuff. This is such useful information to have, especially when you have a 20 gram mini skein that you've purchased and you're not sure if it's going to work for all three sections of both socks. Or if you have a leftover bit of yarn that you wanna use, you can see if you have enough for maybe just the heels or just the toes or all three. So the way that you can do this is again, take whatever you're going to be using, whether it's a mini skein or a leftover ball of yarn, and weigh it on your kitchen scale before you begin. Make sure to write that number down and then work a set portion of your sock. So let's say you're working the cuff, you've weighed it and it weighs 20 grams, you knit the cuff, you weigh it again and it weighs 16 grams. You'll then know that your cuff takes approximately four grams. Everyone's sock is going to be a little bit different based on stitch count, gauge, and the yarn itself. So these are always going to be sort of approximate and you'll want to give yourself a little bit of extra yarn if you're using up a scrap. Like let's say you know you need four grams for the cuff times two because you have two socks, so that would be eight grams. You're probably going to want, going to, want to use a 10 gram scrap just so you have a little extra in there just in case. The next time you're at Target or Walmart or on Amazon, Grab yourself a kitchen scale. It has so many uses in both knitting and crochet. The third thing that experienced knitters do is knit over their ends when they're making socks. Because you may be thinking with contrast yarns or with something like this where you have color changes all the time, it must be really miserable at the end of the sock to weave in all the, those ends but it's not so bad if you can knit over them along the way. Now there are two different methods for knitting over your ends that I'm aware of. The first is the Weave and Steven method, which is from Steven West, where you essentially kind of 
twist your tail around the working yarn as you're knitting it. It works really, really great. Then there's another method that is more popular in color work, and it's the method that I like to use and also teach. I have a full tutorial on so many different times that you can use this knitting over ends technique. I've also recently learned you can purl over your ends, not as relevant in sock knitting, but also very useful. So I will make sure to have both of those tutorials linked down below. Now the places that you can do this on a sock are right from the cuff to the leg transition, you can do it as you introduce your contrast yarn for the heel, as you cut off your contrast yarn from the heel, and as you introduce your contrast yarn for the toe. You can actually knit over the main color and the contrast color separately or together. It's in that um, video. And you can take care of nearly all the ends in your sock. All you're gonna have left if you strategically knit over your ends is the cast on and the uh, grafting at the end. You'll just have two ends to weave in, which is so much better than the like eight to 10 ends you have when you do contrast everything and the many, many, many ends you have when you do stripes or color work or anything like that. Knitting over your ends is essentially where you just hold one yarn in one hand, the tail, and then your working yarn in the other hand. And as you're knitting, you kind of move the tail up and down, either twisting in the Weave and Steven method or over and under in the more color work method. But again, I'll make sure to include full tutorials tutorials for all of that down below. The fourth thing that experienced sock knitters love to do is experiment with different cuffs, heels and toes. There are so many different types of ribbing that you can do in the cuff. There's kind of the standard like knit one purl one ribbing that is a classic. You can also knit two purl two which is another one of my favorites. You could take that up a notch by twisting the knit stitches by knitting them through the back loop and getting a totally different look for knit one through the back loop purl one or you can even twist two by two ribbing. You can play with length, you can play with color. There's even more um, ribbing options than that, but those are just a few. And once you've had a little bit of sock knitting experience, I would say like one pair of socks, you can start trying new things. There's also so many different heels to try. There's short row heels, there's afterthought heels, there's heel flop and gusset. Within the short row heel family, there are so many different ones. My favorite is the Fish Lips Kiss Heel. I've been using that one for years, but I've heard of so many amazing different heels that there are to try. So you can let me know what your favorite one is if you are a short row heel fan. And then of course, there's different kinds of toes. If you didn't know that, there's lots of different kinds of toes. And depending on the way your foot is shaped, you may need one over the other. There's two basic toes, more of a square toe where you just decrease every other round and it just is very, like cornery. Then there's another kind of common toe where you decrease every other round to start out and then you start decreasing more frequently. That's called a rounded toe. My favorite is the ergonomic toe where you kind of get like a, like a steeper slope on one side and then, is that steeper? Yeah. And then a more gradual slope on the other side so that you have um, more space for your big toe and not a lot of extra material around your pinky toe. Again, this all depends on your actual foot and toe shape. And it's fun to experiment with all of those different options until you find the best fit for you. The last thing that experienced sock knitters do is block their socks. This means washing them in soap and water and then blocking them either by laying them flat to dry or using a sock blocker. Sock blockers aren't totally essential, but they are really nice to have, especially if you've done color work socks or some kind of pattern. The thing is you want to pick the correct size. I've got actually a small and a medium here. You don't want your sock stitches or the sock itself to be overly stretched. You just want it to kind of fit around the blocker. Now I don't block my socks every single time that I wash them. I usually just block them the very first time. And after that, I just lay them flat to dry. If you haven't blocked socks before, here's a quick overview on how to do it. First, just fill a small tub or clean sink with water and wool wash. Then let the socks soak alone in case the colors run for about 20 minutes. Squeeze your socks out in a towel and then dry flat or on sock blockers. Socks that are made of natural materials and animal fibers like wool 
don't need to be washed as often as commercially made socks. So um, you can wash your socks every five to 10 wears, whatever you're comfortable with. And like I said, I usually don't block mine after the first um, wash. When I wash them for a second time, just to get them clean, I'll put them together with a few other pairs that are similar colors and then just lay them all flat to dry. There you have it. Those are five more tips to up your sock knitting game. Let me know if I miss anything. And if you haven't seen the first video, go check it out. There's five tips in that one too. And it's especially a good video for newer sock knitters. Now, if you love socks, I'm inviting you to please come join us for Sock Week 2022. It's starting in less than three weeks on July 10th, 2022 and runs through July 17th. It's a challenge to knit or crochet one adult sock in the eight days and all the details are down below. All right, I'll see you in the next one.